Hey, what's going on? So in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to successfully create a lead form that's capable of qualifying leads and kind of filtering through them so that the actual lead quality itself is a lot better than usual compared to just running like a basic lead form and hoping for the best. And then I'll also show you some of the inputs within Ads Manager on how to successfully publish everything so that you're good to go and can actually start generating some leads towards your offer. Now, I just want to start off by saying a little something about the user interface that Meta currently has for building lead forms. So there's two ways you can build a lead form. You can build them directly in your ad when you're actually creating, uh, like when you're clicking through, clicking leads, and then you can create it with an ads manager. Or if you go over to the all tools tab, go to instant forms, then you can create it here as well. But it's so annoying. Meta is like a billion dollar company. You'd think they'd have this figured out by now. But I found just such limitation when trying to build lead forms specifically in this user interface compared to building them directly on uh, Ads Manager. And I'll show you guys an example of what I mean by that. But beware of building them over here. You're going to have a bit more limited display on some of the options that you actually have available to you. So I highly recommend just go ahead and build a fresh campaign and you build the actual lead form itself directly into the campaign. And honestly, it makes things a little bit more straightforward for us anyway. So it's a little convenient. So anyways, what you're going to do is click create, click leads, of course, click continue. Now you have the choice of doing tailored lead campaign or manual leads campaign. So I'd say it really depends on your experience level. If you're a bit more of a veteran with ads manager, then definitely go with manual just so you have more autonomy with the actual inputs at hand. And you know, you can really control where your ad is going to. However, if you're a beginner or you're not really sure how to run the ad properly, I'd say go a tailored leads campaign and meta will do a good job of optimizing towards what it thinks is going to be an ideal target audience of yours. And then from there, of course, you just kind of have to assess the lead quality that you're getting based on the form submission missions and decide whether the lead quality is truly on par with what Meta is trying to bring to you. But yeah, for the sake of this campaign, we are going to do manual though. And if you are a beginner out there, this is just more benefit from you. Um, the only difference is that we get more autonomy to the inputs here. So if you've seen any of my other ad set videos, I always start by changing the naming convention of these three levels, just so you guys at home understand what I'm talking about. Okay, so as you can see here, anyone that runs ads commonly, we call them campaign level, ad set level, and creative level. And this is just to denote, um, you know, the different sections within ads manager. So starting off creative level, there's literally nothing you need to change. All the work we're going to be doing is going to be with an ad set level and creative level itself. So going into ad set level, because we are running a Facebook lead form with the intent of intaking leads information, we're going to keep it on instant form. And then this is also where you're going to set up your budgeting. And especially if you're planning on having different ad sets, if you're running different creatives. So there's two ways you can go about it. Let's say you got six creatives. You could put all six creatives within one ad set. But then what's going to happen is Meta is going to decide which to spend on. And usually what ends up happening, one or two creatives within the ad set will get most of the spend. So let's say you're doing $20 a day. Two of them may hog all of it. So then some of the other smaller creatives never really had a chance to show their true colors. So if you're trying out fresh creatives off the bat, I recommend duplicating your ad set. And then you can push different creatives within each. And then this will force Meta to do equal spend because now we have $20 forcing here and $20 forcing here. But for the sake of this video, we're just going to do one ad set to keep things straightforward, of course. So going back within ad set level, we got our budget set up now. Then down to audience controls, obviously do the country that you're wanting to target. Let me show you an example of when you would want to add more countries other than just your own. So let's say you're doing like a super, super specific target audience. Okay, so what I went ahead and did is just threw in Canada for the sake of having a smaller number. And then I have it only looking for advertising agencies, right? So... If you look here, we got 11 million to 13 million people that are being shown this ad. So especially if you're under 1 million, like I chose something that's still fairly broad, but if you're getting like extremely specific with whatever you're targeting, what you're going to want to do is add different countries to help expand on your target audience that you already have set up. So let's say we added UK here. Obviously, our target audience is now going to be greater. So if you're ever having a problem with you don't have enough volume of leads to actually show this to, um, all you have to do is add different countries that correspond, obviously do ones that aren't in third world countries to make sure that you're still able to get a sufficient inflow of leads. Again, anything over a few million is usually a good set. It also depends on how much ad spend you're actually dumping into this. But for most people, a few million is fine. I wouldn't go any higher than like 100 million also as far as targeting goes because then it's just so broad. Uh, unless you're going for a broad like that, it, it really does depend. It's, it's hard to put a pin on it without knowing you know, the specific target audience you're going for. Especially if you're B2C, you may have so many potential people that could be leads to you. 
So it really just depends what you're going for, right? You're, you're going to know better than anyone, your demographic. And then lastly, at the bottom of ad set level, we have placements. So if you're running something specifically to Instagram or you're wanting to run something specifically to Facebook, always make this manual. Because what it's going to do is automatically push to every single platform if you don't specify. Like, look, right now it's pushing to Instagram, Facebook, and audience network. But let's say I've only got a substantial Instagram account, so I want that to be the front-facing view. And I don't really have any interest in audience network or Facebook leads, so I want this to be an Instagram campaign so by clicking all that now it's only going to be showing to instagram and so especially if you're soliciting services that are platform specific of course you're going to want to spend 100 percent of your actual ad spend budget on that relevant platform okay cool so that's simple straight to the point so now over on our creative level it's as simple as you know adding your actual creative you're wanting to i'm just going to throw up an example one for you guys that i have saved all right so i just threw in that creative and now all we have to do is actually create our lead form so like I was saying before, it's annoying because I was actually able to figure this out while I was recording this too. See, I was trying to get fancy and show that you could build instant forms in that all tools tab where I was telling you about were on a different place other than this. But that's when I realized that the UI is flawed. And I looked online and there's other people talking about the fact that, you know, there's a bit of a disconnect. So definitely create your lead form through here. So the idea here is going to be that the lead looks at your video and then, you know, they click the CTA. It's sign up, although pro tip. I'm going to set this now. Learn more is statistically going to get you the most results, usually no matter the campaign. So I would recommend going with the learn more call to action there. And then again, once they click learn more, then it'll pop up the lead form. They'll actually get started with that data collection, answering all your questions. All right. So we're now ready to build the form. All you have to do is click create form under destination. First thing you must do is rename it. And the reason we need to rename the form is because a lot of times people will forget to do it. And then once you save it, you can't rename it. And then you just run into the issue with having some BS named form. So always rename it. So moving right under that, we have form type. So there's three options here, although the two I'm really going to touch on are more volume and higher intent. Now, the main difference between these two is that higher intent adds an additional screen at the end, kind of like a review screen, and it gives the lead the option to actually uh, see all the information they inputted and ensure that, you know, their phone number, the email, all that's correct before they submit. Now, I will say higher intent will give you overall a smaller volume of leads, so you'll have to bid more per lead that's coming in. But at least from what I've seen, the leads that come through are a little more genuine. Uh, what I mean by that is that we have a lot of funnel hackers that will just, you know, click through a lead form sometimes and just see what you have on the other side of it, right? And so with more volume, there's a lower barrier of entry. So I'll say this, if you're selling something that the vast majority could use or, uh, you know, you have some sort of service that people could benefit from and it doesn't really matter, you don't have too much qualification behind it, then more volume. But uh, what I'm going to be showing you here today is how we're setting up qualification questions. So I'm actually going to go with higher intent because we're really going to try to filter through to get shitty leads out of the way so we only have genuine users that are interested in our services and actually qualify for them. As far as flexible form delivery, I'd go with optimized for that. I know I'm usually a big fan of manual, but for manual here, it's pretty much just giving you autonomy to choose how you want your lead form structured. So when it's optimized, Meta will actually play around with uh, what's getting shown first, the order of the questions and all this. And the reason why is because there may be a specific combination of the presentation of the form that does more successful at getting submissions. So I like to let Meta, you know, decide that it's a little small basic analytic that Meta can run for you. So might as well use it. All right. So on that note, just click over to next. And here's where we're actually going to set up our greeting. So I want you guys to think of a greeting as almost like a filter. So think of this whole lead form in general as like a pasta strainer and the shitty leads are the water and the pasta are the leads we actually want to submit the form, right? So throughout this lead form, we need to frame it in such a way to where not every lead is putting their information in and submitting. What I mean by a filter is on the very first greeting, we have to set the hook and be like, hey, this is only for people that are looking to get this done. If not, click off the page. Just to get kind of more specific on the theory behind this, let's say you're a marketing agency and you help book more sales calls. You're going to be like, if you are an online service provider and you're looking to book more sales call, this is for you. If not, click off the form. If you don't own a business, click off the form. You literally want to specify to someone, click off the form. Again, the reason we're doing this is because we want leads to input their information all the way through and submit to let Meta know, hey, this is a good lead. Go find more people like this. Because now every lead that this didn't apply to, you told to click off the form and they did. So now Meta won't waste time looking for lookalikes of those same people. And again, overall, we're going to get better lead flow through the door and it's just going to save a lot more time. Okay, so this is just a quick example of a greeting. Wake up to a full sales calendar, kind of dangle the result in front of their face, show some interest, explain, are you an online service provider? And then this is the key point here. Click off this page if you don't own a business. So definitely keep this 
not too wordy, straight to the point. You're not going to hurt anyone's feelings. So yeah, we just want to make sure that this is set up. And then again, throughout these questions, we're also going to make sure to filter as well. So what I'm going to be showing here is how to set up a little bit more of an advanced lead form. And what I mean by that is we're going to actually check this conditional logic and we're going to build out specific workflows with how the questions are answered. Meaning if someone answers incorrectly to a question that we're looking for, then we're going to dump them out of the lead form instead of getting their information and be like, hey, sorry, you don't qualify. And again, this is just for proper lead qualification so that going back to the pasta strainer thing, we're getting all the water out and we're only keeping the pasta in. So in this case, we're not going to be dealing with broke people. I mean, sales calls with broke people never go well, of course. So uh, we're going to be asking how much money they're making with their marketing agency currently or you know, with whatever service they're selling currently. I guess if you're a marketing agency, these are going to be end users in this example. So we're going to ask how much they're making to make sure that uh, these businesses actually have motion before we even get their information to work with. So now the conditional logic is checked click multiple choice and as you can see we have this logic step set up and this is going to allow us to do different avenues of how the lead is actually managed within the contact form okay so i just wrote out some different answer choices multiple choice so the idea is going to be to disqualify people that do zero to five thousand and then we're going to push anyone through that does five thousand or above onto the next question so within logic you literally just do close form for this first one to disqualify them and then for all these other ones after we're going to go to next question so we actually have to set up the next question after that before in order for us to link it so we're just gonna ask another question we're gonna make this one a short answer another important point to note sometimes people like to funnel hack especially if you're a marketer my experience is myself just competitors like to funnel hack you see what you're doing so kind of a way to prevent people from clicking through without having a genuine input is to add a couple short answer questions throughout just so someone actually has to take through the time and type. And again, this also helps to just filter out people that aren't supposed to be there. So a good one I use is like, what's your business URL? Because if some someone who doesn't even own a business, they're not going to have a URL to a landing page. So it's a good way to disqualify someone from inputting their information. Just going off that, I just put what is your business URL for this question. So now Going back up here to this logic, we can do go to question and then we can select Q2, what's your business URL? And that's all there is to it. And then we just do that same thing for all of these. And now everything will route over to this next question or it'll be this end landing page and we'll set up these landing pages at the end, don't worry. All right, now assuming that they input their business URL and they submit that, or they click continue on that, then we'll actually push them over to the ending page and get their information. So what we can also add here is phone number. Highly recommend adding phone number too. So another thing, it's annoying that, again, the, the UI on this is so crap because you can't like switch the nodes. So what you have to do is delete the node in order to replace it. So as far as like kind of marketing fundamental, um, and data that you're asking for, it goes name, email, phone number in that order. Statistically, supposedly is psychologically going to be the most likely for a lead to actually go through and do it. So it's not letting me, it's not letting me delete the phone number yet. So let's throw an email and then phone number will be deletable. Bam. And then add phone number back. It's ridiculous. The meta's like this, but bam, there we go. So now we got name, email, phone number in that order. So over here, here's that greeting. And then once they answer this first question, they'll be able to click continue. Again, Meta doesn't let us see, but how it actually will go once this is a live form is Meta will let you click through it. And then, so assuming that they say zero, then they'll be disqualified. Anyways, then we get the information. I almost skipped past it. So the last thing, we have to set up a description of how this information is going to be used. It can be anything. Just make sure that, you know, you're honest in what your use case for this information is just to make sure that you're actually compliant. Okay, so here I'm just writing, we'll use your contact information to send the demo video. So especially if you have a lead magnet, it's like, okay, so that's why he needs this. He's going to send me over something. What I have set up, I have an AI appointment setter integrated into Go High Level. So anytime a lead submits the form, I'm automatically texting them and, you know, starting to warm them through my pipeline. You know, the opportunity are endless with how you actually manage the leads that put this in. Anyway, so we're going to click over to next. All right now within privacy policy, you need to actually input your privacy policy link. Now, if you're unfamiliar with this, I know it can be a hassle. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave my Instagram in the description below. If you're curious on how to build out a privacy policy, uh, what I can actually do is send you over my privacy policy build that I have within Go High Level, and I can uh, send you over a snapshot that you can copy into your account. And yeah, this is, you know, the basic setup. 
Obviously, you, you need to custom tailor specific points in here to your business model. But this is the format I use to show my privacy policy to end users. So if a user does decide to click over, you know, they'll have this embedded hyperlink right here to actually visit Scott Henry's privacy policy. But anyways, that's all there is to there. It's just for some more. It's just for additional compliance to cover Meta's ass, honestly, and make sure that the ball's in your court if there is any litigation. And then there's nothing to edit on the review screen. It stays the same. And then from there, you click over to next. And this is where we actually map out those two ending pages that I discussed with you for disqualifying a lead and qualifying them. So here you literally just put copy, you know, say thanks for inputting the information and tell them the next steps. So in this example, let's say we had a lead magnet. I'm going to tell them now that they've inputted the information to expect a text from me, we'll chat, but then I'll also drop a landing page just for them to get some additional information for the time being. So here, assuming all the lead qualification questions were submitted, then we say you're all set. Uh, you'll receive a text from me shortly with the link to the demo video. In the meantime, check out this website and then I drop the website here. And then, so this is what the lead will actually see. And then again, I have this set up to SMS text the lead. And if you are curious how to build out an SMS text, automation flow within go high level i'll be linking a video at the end of this video where i dive into the go high level side of the lead form and uh, show you how you can link everything so you can have an actual pipeline set up and then for a disqualification screen you could do like thanks for your interest at this time you don't qualify but check out our youtube channel for some more resources and the idea here is that you still get some benefit as far as what you're paying for because this lead ended up submitting the information anyway, so you had to pay for it. So, hey, at least maybe get some YouTube views from it. That's the way I see it. But, yeah, guys, that's all there is to it as far as the actual lead form itself. So, at this time, we have everything we need set up. So, we can go ahead and create the form. And the example form we have set up is there. So all there is to do now is set up a pixel if you have one. There's so much benefit in using a pixel if you're sending people over to a landing page because then you're now allowed to track all the incoming traffic with on the lead form itself that Meta is able to track for you. And you're also giving Meta all the additional information that's taking place as far as where the lead is at on your landing page, especially if you're running some sort of product, then you're able to see you know how far they made it into the funnel. But yeah, guys, that's all there is to it. If you're running a fresh campaign, I highly recommend running a couple different creatives against each other. Don't bank on just one creative to win because you know in the ads game it's really good to get some numbers down and get some tangible data that you can actually use to draw legitimate insights and also I just wanted to quickly show you guys what I was talking about earlier now that we went through the entire lead form so going over to this instant form thing the reason I was saying it wasn't as good this is a different example form so when you click over to questions check this out even if you do conditional logic so I found that it works for short answers fine but the thing is it like short answers don't make sense to use conditional logic because you know it's hard to filter for you know specific selection that way and then on the multiple choice it it just doesn't exist it's it's very frustrating and You'd think a billion dollar company would have this figured out, but hey, this is what Meta's given us. And as marketers, it's something we just have to work with. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much how you build out the lead form itself. If you want any more information on how to link the backend automation side of it, about how to set up the CRM lead connector into go high level and actually deliver a SMS campaign to send leads, follow ups and try to book them in onto your calendar. I'll be linking a video right after this one showing how you can go about doing that. And again, if you have any questions, just reach out to me on the DMs and I'll be happy to answer them. And on that note, keep winning, y'all.